Okay, so I'm going to talk about my 30-day experience using uh, the program Anki with learning French. Mostly French vocabulary, but also a little bit of grammar as well. Now, I learned about Anki after reading a book called Fluent Forever by great Gabriel Weiner. Um, and it's the first book that laid out, at least to me, a way of learning language that made sense. That it actually felt like if you do X, you will get Y. X being the methods in the book, Y being you will learn the language. And every other method that I've ever come come uh, I've ever experienced or read about, it is either two things. It's either the very traditional way you might learn in high school or perhaps in, in university. I've never taken a language class in university, but mostly my experience in French is in high school, where I guess you do a lot of conjugations, you learn some vocabulary, you do a little bit of writing, a little bit of reading. But at the end of five years of high school, I got A's in all my classes, but I didn't really know how to speak French or really understand it very well. So that was not very effective. And then on YouTube, you often see polyglots, as they like to call themselves, talk about how the way they learn languages, which is a very, it's a very romantic view and very vague as well. It's like you just kind of have to let the language flow into you, you got to play with it, but it's not a particularly accessible way of, of, of a method because they don't actually tell you what they do. Almost to every single video I've ever seen about people, they don't actually talk about what specifically they do. They might mention something about a textbook. They might mention about watch a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of TV or YouTube videos in the target language. But in terms of actually, what specifically should I do to learn a language? I, I as far as I can tell, I've never actually seen anyone describe very specifically what to do. Um, but the, the method that they talk about in for, uh, Fluent Forever uses Anki. And so if you're at all interested in learning languages, check out the book. Uh, I think it's great. And it's not only great for learning languages, the this this system of space repetition, but also with, uh, I've been using it for ear training and other things as well. So it seems great for a lot of things. But let's just talk about my experience so far the last 30 days. So in front of me here is the card types that I've looked at over the last 30 days. So currently, if you look at it, the total cards is 1,060 over the course of four weeks. So that's basically, I my, the pace I learn is roughly somewhere between approximately two, 30 cards a day, which is about 15 words a day, because every card has at least two, two cards, the front and the back. And the, so it says here the total notes is 584, which means that it translates to approximately 584 words. And what's, what is called the mature cards, the 301 here, are the cards that have an interval where I don't actually have to review it um, until at least 22 days. Now, if you don't understand what space repetition is, I suggest look it up. There's lots of videos on YouTube about what it is, but the basic gist of it is that once you you review something and you get the answer correct, the system waits a little bit longer than it did the previous time. And then the next time you get it right, it's going to wait even longer because the more you wait, the more likely, the, the better it'll actually help you remember it in the future because that recall process is what makes you remember. So I have 301 cards or 150 words in French that I know to a mature level. And I actually haven't got to the point where I've tested any of these mature cards, but so I guess you could say I've learned 150 card, 150 words in French in a month, which is not that impressive to be honest. That's only five words a day. But if you look, if you're a little more generous, I've sort of learned about a thousand cards, which is about 584 words or about 500 words which is not bad for a month, I think. And if I kept up that pace after a year, it would be about 6,000. So uh, I doubt I'll be able to keep up that pace, but we'll see how it goes. 
So in terms of like actual content, it's actually, I find it impressive. Maybe it's not for a lot of people, but uh, I think, yeah, it's been, it's been interesting. So why don't we look at the, some of the stati statistics uh, other than just the total amount of cards. Uh, my overall correct percentage for all my young cards, so the cards that are not yet mature, is 97.24%, which is pretty high. You generally want somewhere between 90 to 95%, ideally. So 97% is really good. And for the cards that I'm like, like brand new, that I've only seen when I made the cards, it's about 91%, which I think is still pretty good. It's in that target range. And especially since I only saw it once when I made it, which might have been like several days previously, still pretty good. But like I said, after one month, I'm still not quite at the point where I'm reviewing mature cards, which should be pretty pretty soon, actually. Um, so let's go up a little bit. The hourly breakdown I don't think is particularly interesting. Doesn't I don't think it shows interesting information. The intervals, the longest time between cards when I review them, again, not particularly interesting, but the longest duration it shows here is just over 30 days. So, cool. And then the shortest is, of course, like zero days in like one day because I reviewed 30 new cards today. Thus, I will be, actually, I reviewed 60 cards, actually. And so then tomorrow, I will actually have to review those again. So that's why that's the most. But you can see, actually, that it's actually relatively even, which is interesting. I'm not really sure why the distribution is not a little more lopsided in one direction, but... There we go. Uh, here is my added system. So one of the principles of the Fluent Forever system is that you have to make your own flashcards. You can't just download a thousand flashcards from the internet of the top thousand words in French and expect to learn it. You can do it eventually, but it's not very good because uh, space repetition at Anki specifically is not very good for learning material. It's, it's really good for reviewing material and making sure you never forget it. But you need that initial moment where you're essentially learning it for the first time by creating the card itself, by looking at the word, reading it, pronouncing it for yourself, and coming up with some kind of concept or image that represents it. Um, now, you notice here that there's huge gaps in like the creation. I've kind of settled into a nice routine of about, I make about 210 cards once a week, in like one session, in a couple of hours, which is nice because I don't like to make flashcards every day. It's fun, but it's it's work. It's a lot of work. It's not nearly. A, it's might, way more work than actually reviewing cards. That's the fun part. Actually, making them can be fun, but it's also significant mental effort. And during the middle of a work week, I don't really want to have to to do that. So I, I like to create about a week's worth of cards, or about a thirty per day. That's the pace I like to keep. Um, so I don't have to worry about it during the week. I just, every day, I just sit down, I open Anki, when it's time to go, do my review. It usually takes me about half an hour, approximately, for all my cards. And after that day is done, I just put it away for the day. And what I initially did when I was first starting is, I did about a 30 a day. I, I made them every single day, but I don't think that's sustainable. I think it's much better to, when you have the time and the motivation, make a bunch at once. Some people might do more than a week's worth. I think a work week's worth is nice because there's not so much time that you kind of forget what you even made in that week. So that it's still slightly fresh in your memory so that you can hopefully, when you're reviewing the card for the first time, you'll actually remember. And so I think week is that you could probably do two weeks if you wanted to spend like hours on one day on a weekend doing that. But I think a week is probably a nice, healthy balance. And so that's, that's roughly the, the schedule. I think on these particular two weekends, I just, I did it on over two days, but 210 cards I make once a week. And in a second, I'll show you how I actually make the cards. But here's the review time that I've been doing. It's fairly consistent. The last few days, now, today and a few days ago, it's close to an hour of review time, mostly because I did a lot. Uh, sometimes I would like pause on one card for a while just because I get distracted by something else or I have to talk to someone. And so that kind of stretches out the time a little bit. And also on those days, I decided, what the heck, I'm just going to study an extra 30 cards just because I feel like it. And so those days went a bit a, a little bit long. But every, every day else, it's fairly consistent. It's around a half an hour per day, which is very manageable. Actually, in the beginning, it was more like 15 to 20 minutes. So 30 minutes, though, a day is really not that much.
But if you look at the total time for the month, 711 minutes, so uh, about 12 hours, which actually when you say it out loud, it sounds like a lot, but when it's just 30 minutes a day and it's kind of fun to do, it doesn't feel like that much time. Uh, but, and like it says here, the average about 23 and a half minutes. So that's very manageable and it doesn't ever feel like a grind to me. I find it fairly enjoyable every single day. Um, here's the review count. This is just kind of the, the total number of cards I do every day. And it, it looks like it's slowly creeping up. Uh, the, so now there's, again, of, of, un, ignore these three days just because they're, they're outliers, but the normal days, fairly consistent, but again, slowly, steadily increasing. So I don't know what it's going to look like in six months. I imagine it's probably not going to get beyond, I mean, hopefully, I'm, I'm sure there'll be an equilibrium at some point, no more than like 200 cards a day, hopefully. But we'll see. Um, but so far, so good. And you notice how in the red here is the, those are the, those are the cards or the reviews where I got it wrong and specifically cards that I technically knew from previous review session, but I got it wrong anyways. And that's been actually very consistent. It's roughly just a few a day. Like today, for example, I had to relearn two cards, two cards that I knew previously but forgot. And it's been fairly consistent, no more than five-ish approximately, not very much, which is good so far. Now, a lot of these words I might have known already from previous studies, but not, not, uh, not very much so far. So that's good. It means I'm retaining the information. The big test though is when, if you can see on this chart, all the dark green are the cards that are going to be coming up soon that are mature cards that I I technically know really well and the interval spaced out of when I next review them is more than 22 days. So the nearest one that I haven't seen in over 22 days is coming up looks like in three days. So that's like the test of did I actually remember it. And I'm not sure what the ideal percentage of mature cards you're supposed to remember, but over time the amount of mature cards should be growing and that you shouldn't be losing a net amount of mature cards, which means that you just forgot them after 22 days. Because if it can stick for more than 22 days or more than a month, that means it's very likely it's a permanent memory. that You only have to review every couple months or three months or four months, at least to keep it fresh. So, um, that's pretty much the statistics. Now what I'm going to do now is kind of just walk through what is my workflow for creating Anki cards. Okay, so I'm going to make just a brand new one. I'll show you what my cards look like and how long it takes me because it is very important that you make every single one of these cards. So I made, really I made 584 cards, which turns into about 10,060 because every time you make one, it actually makes multiples, which is nice. So let's, let's make an Anki card. Okay, so I'm going to go to add. Now this particular this particular interface is based on the all-purpose card that Gabriel Weiner basically created for Anki. He modified existing the existing decks to make it uh, specifically for learning language. And you can, if you go to his website fluentforever.com, you can download his model deck, and it can and you can use it to make great flashcards. I really like this particular format for a flashcard because it allows you to put sentences in. Both sentences, pronunciation, pictures, everything to help you remember. So let's go through, let's choose a word. So Gabriel Weiner has this list of 625 words that you should be that you should learn first before you learn grammar or anything else. You should just learn these words because it'll make everything so much easier. It covers probably like 60% of the whole language, of French at least something like that. And so that when you actually dive in and learn more vocabulary and grammar and stuff, everything is so much easier. That's the theory at least. And so far, so good. So I'm roughly here, I'm, I'm about just over two thirds through the list. And the word I'm gonna demonstrate with is the word pocket. So in, so in, in French, pocket is la poche. Now, I don't know if that's the actual way to pronounce it, but we'll find that out in a second, but it's poche. Okay, and so let's put that into, so this is the multi-search thing that you can do that's available on his website, Gabriel Weiner's website as well, that all it does is you just type in the word in the target language, and it creates a whole bunch of links right away, and they all contain useful information. So let's, let's do it. So posh is the word for pocket. Let's enter. 
Now the first tab up here I don't use very often, it's just a translation, but usually I've already know what the word is and sometimes it's not the correct word. But this is like my bread and butter, this is the best. This is one of the best ways i found to remember these words is that you always learn a word through the context of a sentence. So all I do is I take, if I read the sentence, make sure I understand it, there's an English translation to the right. So the sentence is, j'ai toujours des bonbons à la, I don't know how to pronounce that word, monte, perhaps, dans ma poche. And again, I don't know how to pronounce poche yet. Excuse my pronunciation. But it means I always keep mints in my pocket. So it seems like a simple enough sentence and I can keep the meaning in my head. And I pretty much know all these words. I know j'ai, I know toujours, even though I don't think I've, technically put that in a flashcard yet, but I know it from previous studies. De, of course, bonbon. Uh, that's not in a flashcard, but I know it. Candy. Ala. Now, ala, I don't actually know. Well, I know those words, but I don't actually... That pat, that grammar pattern of ala menthol, or mince, uh, I don't really know that pattern too well. It doesn't seem very familiar, so that might be a flashcard as well. Um, I don't know the word for mint, so that's that's something I have to learn as well, but I do know don, do, do know ma, and of course, pocket, I am learning right now. So I think I just copy, so I copy the sentence, and I go back to An Anki. What I do is I paste the full sentence in, okay? And then I go up to the top and paste the sentence again, but what I do is I just blank out the word I'm learning. So Again, I don't know how it's pronounced yet, but that's the first step. And the idea with these flashcards is that by being exposed to all these sentences and doing fill in the blanks, you get an awareness of the language and it becomes much more memorable because each sentence is a little story that you can remember. It's so much easier to remember the word in the pocket in the context of thinking about the story of candies and uh, mint candies in your pocket uh, than just the, just the word pocket, just by itself. That's what I found, at least. The flashcards, which are just words and a picture, uh, they're so far so good. I've been remembering them, but the words part of a sentence so much more permanently. I found so far, at least. Okay, so we got the sentence. We got the we blanked out posh or however it's pronounced. We'll learn in just a second. So next step is the pronunciation. So the next tab that we can delete, we can close the previous tab. The next one is the website called Forvo or Forvo.com. And it automatically opens up a pronunciation of that word. Okay, so let's see how this person pronounces the word. Push. 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 So all you do is you just download the file. Great. And you just drag the file into the pronunciation box. Push. Push. So now when you get the flashcard, you can, you'll hear that sound when you get the answer, and that way you know how it should sound. In addition, often, but not for all words, it has the IPA spelling of the word, which is super useful. So if you know those symbols, and I've been learning them so far, and I know them fairly well right now, is it gives you the IPA spelling, which is a very specific way of explaining how it should be pronounced. So it's the P sound, the O sound. I, I'm actually not great at that syllable. I'm not 100% on it yet but it's in the same as in the word comment or uh, cochon, as opposed to like o, like an hôpital. So comment or hôpital, so that's what this one is. And then the last letter in IPA is the sh. So the whole word is push, which push. push is how it's pronounced by the audio example. So I like to sometimes, if I feel like it, I just copy and paste in addition the IPA. Okay, so push. Okay, now this is a word. Now this is a, a noun. So we need to. Every noun in French, of course, has a gender. So we want to include that in our flashcard. So usually I put this after the pronunciation, and I just write the definite article and then the word again. So la push. Oops. Now the way it, it, this seems kind of slow because I'm explaining it, but again, it should be really quickly. Uh, it should be really quick. You can do a card in less than 30 seconds. It shouldn't take you long. Okay, so la poche, just to tell me that it's feminine. Or sometimes I'll just do f for feminine. That's fine. Either one is fine. Just um, Often though, when you look at these sentences so much, you kind of just like memorize it by rote in a way, the, the sound of it. Because 
I'm going to be seeing this sentence a lot over the course of several days, and I'm going to hear maposh, maposh, maposh over and over again, and I'll just know after a while, oh yes, it's feminine. But it's important to include that in your card. Okay, so one thing we want to do and make sure is that we want to make two cards. So one card is going to be just the single word that says push. Okay, and then your job, once you see that, is to try your best to put it into a sentence or even just a little phrase. So if you just said dans ma poche, poche, dans ma poche, sorry my pronunciation is bad, but dans ma poche. If you could remember that, that's probably good enough in my opinion. But if you can remember this whole sentence, and it's actually easier said than done, it's Actually, it's not easier than said than done. It's actually not too bad. Because um, after a while, you just remember the phrase, remember the story, and the words just kind of come out naturally over time, especially if you're learning multiple words in the sentence. But if you can, yeah, try to remember a sentence or make up your own sentence. It's totally fine. Uh, you can even something simple like ma poche ATC. My, my pocket is here. That's fine. As long as it's some kind of sentence you're communicating with the word, and at the same time, you're visualizing what the word actually means, not in English, because we don't want to do English translation. We only want to think about it in the context of a French sentence or just the generic concept that's in your head of what a pocket looks like. Okay. Now, we need a picture though. Now, I just go to images and find a pocket. So, just whatever pocket seems to jump out is interesting. So, this one's funny. It has an arrow and, I don't know, his hand position is kind of funny. So, let's do that one. So I just do copy image and don't click on the image because it'll become too big and you don't want giant images in your flashcards, but just in the preview image size is fine. So just copy image. I think in Safari you can probably drag it, but in Chrome I think you have to copy and paste. And there's my image for push or push. And then yeah, that's pretty much it. The card's almost done. You can test spelling, but I've never really done that before. So I'm not gonna do it. And one other little trick you can do is copy and paste that image and put it into this paste area so that if you make multiple flashcards with the same sentence, you can actually reuse that image multiple times so that it kind of jogs your memory of the whole story. I should probably have another picture for maybe mint mint candy because I think that was the I think that was the sentence. Okay, so let's find a picture for mints or mint candy. Okay, that's good enough. So I'm going to copy image again, copy and paste. If you can better system than that, that's fine. But so yeah, so j'ai toujours des bonbons à la main, however you pronounce that word, dans ma poche. That's the full sentence that we'd be memorizing essentially. And it's not, again, it's not memorizing through road, it's memorizing through the, the concept and the images. Okay. So that's pretty much my flashcards, pretty much done. I got my pronunciation, I got my word, I got my sentence, I got the fill in the blank, and that's it. And then just do add. So, now an annoying thing is that it leaves the pronunciation box still full of the previous card stuff, so you just have to delete that. But after that, you still have the sentence that you were using, working on in the original box, as well as that image you were looking at before. So now, you just do a different word in the sentence that you don't know. So for example, I don't really know the rule about a la when you're talking about, I guess, describing the candy, what kind of candy it is. Um, I'm sure there's a rule, but I don't know it yet. So I'm just going to memorize that kind of just by sound and by knowing the context. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to learn how to use a la in this kind of sentence. So what I do is just exactly the same thing. So now I have j'ai toujours des bonbons, something, then however you pronounce that word, and then dans ma poche, okay? And now you make sure you put à la, it's worth it to learn your, uh, your, your shortcuts or your little commands to do, uh, to do accents in, on a Mac, it's very useful. I find it very hard on a PC, but Macs is pretty simple. So yeah, same thing, you got the à la, that's what you want to try and remember, and when you get just the à la card, you gotta come up with some kind of sentence where that makes sense. So probably just the, the particular sentence we're working on. So you have to try and remember, j'ai toujours des bonbons à la, whatever that word is, dans ma poche. So let's remember that whole thing. Again, excuse my pronunciation. So again, you can just reuse the same images that you used before. I think I forgot to put the mint candy one into my save, my copy and paste little field here. So let's do that again. 
Again, you can use the exact same images because the images represent the story. All you're using is the images to rem remember that story so that the ala comes back to you. Okay? Now, it's hard for these little grammar words, it's hard sometimes to find pronunciation, so I'm just going to skip that. They're fairly straightforward, ala, like, they're not hard. Although that's probably wrong because my pronunciation's bad, but uh, there's no reason to get an audio file for that, I don't think. Okay? So, what this card's done? That took us how long? Two seconds? Maybe not quite, but if I wasn't explaining it, it would be a lot faster. But yeah, so we've got ala, we just have to remember how to use that in the context of this sentence. So for example, let's preview this one. Uh, so this would be the one half of the card. It would say, J'ai toujours des blancs à la montre dans ma poche. So what is the word that we have to find there? So that was bonbon. Okay, so you have to think about that story again. And then what is the actual word that goes there? And then when we actually check, bonbon. we hear the sound bonbon. And then we see the whole sentence here, as well as whether it's masculine or feminine. Now, you should also say, when you say bonbon, bon, you should also think to yourself, that's masculine or that's feminine, to make sure that you, you're really getting that as well. And that's it. That's the method. And that's how you make the, the flashcards. That's basically how Gabriel Weiner suggests making cards. That's how I do it. That's kind of my workflow. And, yeah, from that one sentence, we got ten flashcards. We learned four distinct concepts or ideas or words, whatever you want to call them. And we can move on to the next sentence. And I got all that information just from that one word pocket. And then we move on to the next word, poison. I'm sure there'll be another sentence that has a bunch of interesting concepts. So by the time I've done this list, I'll have much more than 625 words. I'll have, oh, I'm sure like thousands, because I have about 500 something words now, two thirds of the list. So I imagine I'll have, again, probably closer to a thousand words just from the, the sentence mining process. And then after that, my intention is to start going through a grammar book that I, I got that actually Weiner recommended that goes through basically most of French grammar. And Weiner has his own method of learning things like conjugations and stuff, but it's roughly the same process, just sentences, fill in the blanks, stories, images without English translation. And, and yeah, so that's my 30 day process. That's my 30 day experience. This is kind of a long video kind of explaining the full thing, but in future videos, like in another 30 days, when I give you another update of how things are going, it'll probably be a lot shorter because the method doesn't really change. I do it every single time. So I can at least just tell you a little bit more about my statistics and how, how things are going, if I'm still enjoying the process. But after 30 days, I'm learning a lot, I'm having fun. I like to watch the statistics grow every day, and actually discovering the French language again has been very meaningful to me because I've always felt a little ashamed that I can never speak French despite being Canadian and despite doing French in school for so long. But it does feel like I'm really trying, I'm really getting the language back in a way. And also focusing on pronunciation has been great too because my pronunciation is pretty bad today, but... I'm doing my best to learn the specific sounds, the vowels and the consonants that are in in French. And I had no idea how complicated it was and how different it was from English, but it's slowly becoming internalized and hopefully in the near future my accent will improve. So that is my update so far and I'll let you know in 30 days how things are going.